Hallo und herzlich willkommen bei hiphop.de. Mein Name ist Helene Fares und ich war vor kurzem für euch auf dem Royal Arena Festival, wo ich zu guter Letzt mit Royce the Five Nine und DJ Premier aka Prime gequatscht habe. Leider ist natürlich so kurz vor dem Interview unser drei Meter langes Mikrofon kaputt gegangen, weswegen die Soundqualität leider nicht ganz so gut sein konnte. Ich hoffe aber, dass es euch trotzdem gefällt und dass ihr Spaß damit habt. Bis bald. Dr. Dre called my home when I was living with my parents. And my dad answered the phone. He was like, is Royce there? He was like, who's calling? He was like, Dr. Dre. <laughs> my dad was like, who? Dr. Dre on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Royal Arena Festival, Prime. DJ Premier, Rise to Five Nine, how are you guys feeling? Good, good. We just Great. got through performing. I'm soaking wet. I can but see that. We're here with you. Pretty nice though. <laughs> That's why I'm chewing gum so I can have fresh breath. Don't you Shame. worry about it. I I just <laughs> threw my chewy gum away because I thought it would be too rude. It is rude. Is but it? We can do it because we're right. entertainers and get away. Yeah, with you so know much. I'm like a newcomer and stuff. I can't I can't handle it. <laughs> um, It's your second time in Switzerland this year, isn't it? Yeah. Am I right? Mm -hmm. So, how does it feel to be back? How do the both festivals they've been at, um, Oakmeer Frauenfeld, you've been mm -hmm. at? Um, how, like, would you compare it? How would you compare it? What, how do you feel about that? This one, I think I like the crowd just a little bit better than the, uh, what was the one? Frauenfeld? Frauenfeld, yeah. Frauenfeld, yeah. That was a good one. I too. loved that crowd, but that crowd was bigger. I was gonna say that, yeah. That crowd was bigger, so there's something about the really, really big crowds. You don't feel as much of a connection. I was a, a lot closer to this crowd because I can literally like reach out and touch people, so I think I like this crowd a little bit better. But both crowds had amazing energy. So do you feel the same? Because yeah. Yeah. Is, it, is it always like that, that like the smaller crowds are a little bit more intimate? Well, and... that's what we did. That's how we did our tour. Instead of doing the really like 5,000 to 2,000 uh, seat type of a, of a crowd, we said, let's do even the smaller ones, let's do 300 to 500, sometimes do 1,000 in bigger towns, but just to keep it more intimate and, and it gives you just as much of a vibe. A lot of the promoters were like, yo, we should do bigger ones because yeah. we, were, we were overselling the tickets, which is a good thing, yeah. but we'll come back out. That's really good. We'll go back out and do more shows. I like the smaller shows better. Yeah. I mean, you're playing you're pre playing a pretty small show, like or two pretty small shows in Germany very soon. I think it was September or October. Yeah, October? But, that, but that's with a band, so that's something new territory that I'm just getting into. Where Prime, we've done a tour of almost seven weeks and got to you know really really perfect the, our, our show and just even how we arrange songs and mm -hmm. perform with people. So we just got that tour out of the way, and now we're starting to do Europe, where the band is a new thing. I have to still get to adjust to that I never done it in my oh, really? Career. Never, no. So, like you say, you have had to adjust the show that you yes. do together. Do you think you're at your peak right now? Is it as, as good as it gets for you two? No way. Not for I me. try not to feel like that. Yeah. Um, I mean, just show-wise. I, mean, I don't mean musically. Um, I mean show-wise. No, you know, just as an as a, as a artist and as a creative person, you always strive to be the best that you can be. Mm -hmm. And usually, you know, like people who do something as a profession, let's use boxers for an example. Boxers are usually the last ones to know when they pass their prime or they reach their peak. And the whole concept of the album is to say that we're in our permanent prime. Basically, there's no such thing as plateauing. There's always room for improvement. You're never as good as you can be. I try to keep myself of that mind frame. Yeah, that's the right way to do it because that way you never put a limit on how far you can go with your talent. You know what I'm saying? Otherwise, you're only you only feel that you're as good as a certain line. You're supposed to cross every line. Every line that comes up, cross it. Keep crossing. That makes you even better and better as you age. What what keeps you motivated though? Like I mean, sometimes Passion, passion and love for the for what we do. With, you know, for a living. How yeah. I many people would love to do this? But and then there's people that are doing it and they're not as good because they're not putting the same effort that we put into it. So we kind of already know what their story is gonna how it's gonna end career wise because they're following the patterns that I've seen with so many people that don't take the whole entire career as a whole serious. You gotta take the whole career as a whole serious. Not just rapping, not just DJing, not just making records, not just being famous. You gotta take a whole entire lifespan of your your life, your personal life with your uh, you know, your professional life to know how to balance it out and live comfortably and be a happy person most of the time. So you've you've been <laughs> you've, you've been in this game for a lot. 
much yeah. longer than so you. How do you feel like working with such a? I'll just call you legend if I may. How do you feel about that? Like how how did it? Yeah, how did especially how did it feel it in the beginning? I mean, when you're like kind of a newcomer, which you aren't anymore. But how did it feel in the beginning? Like yeah, it was one of the first milestones for me. You know, like it, and it opened up new doors to my confidence. You know, like for somebody like Preem to take a liking to little old me at 19 years old, it started. You know, it shot my confidence through the roof, and it, it let me know that you know anything is possible. You know what I mean? So that was like one thing that happened. Do working with Dr. Dre was another one. Dr. Dre called my home when I was living with my parents. And my dad answered the phone. He was like, "Is Royce there?" And he was like, "Who's calling?" He was like, "Dr. Dre." <laughs> My dad was like, Who? Dr. Dre on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just like. Do you have any any illnesses? Like, what's yeah, going yeah, on? Yeah. <laughs> like, there's a doctor on Dr. the phone. <laughs> kind of sound like the, the famous guy, but I don't know what you would be calling you for. <laughs> Obviously, chasing rap is not a good idea. Oh you know what I'm saying? Right. So it was just like, you know, like things like that happened to me early in my career. Mm. And really made me a firm believer, you know, in just chasing your dreams and not listening to anything anybody had to say. So. You know, so I just start racking up milestones, working with DJ Premier, working with Dr. Dre, not only just working with him, but developing a relationship with him. You know, um, those kind of strong relationships is the reason why, you know, you can have that kind of longevity in the business. So it's great. How did you, like, how did you first react to him when you met him? Like, how, how did you even he get to know the, him? He thought I was the fucking best rapper he <laughs> ever, ever worked with. Yeah, I, I was a fan off Rip because uh, I used to DJ uh, Mix Show Radio. Mix Show Radio, we call when you cut, scratch, and mix up a song. And when a hot new record is out that you think is hot to you, you play it and put it into the mix. And that makes people start going, hey, what's that song? And eventually that record becomes a big hit instead of just saying, you gotta play this. So we come from the era of pure underground raw records and vinyl. They put out a vinyl record through uh, a 12 inch single and uh, no album or anything. And I'd already heard of Eminem, but I'd never heard of Royce. But the fact that Royce and M did a 12 inch called Bad Meets Evil, I was a big fan of Scary Movie, which was the B side. Usually the A side is what everybody pushes for radio, yeah, clubs, yeah, absolutely, yeah. everything. We were like the B side's hot. And then I remember when Scary Movie, the movie came out, it was also on that movie. And, <laughs> and it, was know that. Right, it just felt right, you know, it was when the credits were rolling, it was just like, hey, I love that song. We do it in our set when we have more time. We, we, we do the show in our set. All right. So, uh, so long story short. Sound uh, Long story short, sorry about all the noise. Don't worry. Um, yeah. I don't even know what he was trying to say He's, with that. Uh, he said, wrap it up. Wrap, wrap it, it up. up. That means, That's true. Right. That means you got That looks like it. a heart. He did but, that. But long story short. <laughs> yeah. I love you. So, so, so long story short, yeah. so we'll give you at least an extra two minutes. All right, great. Long story short, when I heard the scary movie on the Bad Meets Evil 12 inch, I was a big fan. I used to do Stretch and Bobito's show, which is a very popular underground show. And I played it that night. And mad calls came and saying who is that who is that? i'll never forget a lot of phone calls and i already said i'd already heard how eminem rap i never heard royce rap so i started paying attention to how he spit but then he got to deal with tommy boy which and that's a legendary label. yeah absolutely and now I, one of one of the associates of the gangstar family worked for tommy boy and told me that royce wanted to get a, a record from me where i was already a fan where it's like i don't like to say ah oh, let me see what he's got it was like, yo, I like him. Right away, let's do it. Oh my God. That is so this. happy for you, man. That's so good. Like, being a young person in the music industry, I I can only, like, dream of how amazing that must feel to you. But Yeah, I used to buy I used to buy all the, um, the, the singles and the 12 inches. And um, it, it used to have, like, the number to DMP Studios, the number, and, like, mail and info, and I used to call the number. I used to think if you recorded DMD Studios, you made it. Wow. So if you can oh, get yeah. a DJ Premier beat and you can record at DMD Studios, That's you made cool. it. That was like a dream of mine from Detroit. So like wow. to be in DMD Studios, not only be in there, but with recording there is a milestone. That's crazy. Even without recording with Premier, to record at DMD Studios was a milestone. And then to be crazy, in there man. in his room recording with him, stealing a beat from Capone and Noriega, who's another classic group in hip hop. 
That's another milestone. Still mm. stealing Capone and Noriega's beat. Exactly. You, you know, just you just talked about gangster. If I may ask, how is the um, work together with um, Guru, Guru me rest in peace? Um, different from the work with Royce. There's similarities because there's a saying that we say in, in America, we when somebody gets it, like they get it. There's no instruction, there's no book, there's no rule book, but we know the rules automatically. Certain people just get it. Then there's people that just don't and they gotta keep re repeatedly being taught how to be and how to adjust to how the game goes. Royce is a lyricist, so I already know if I give him a dope beat that, that I think is gonna make him wanna write some crazy shit, I know that it's gonna be crazy. So I'm always thinking with that mentality, like what's something I could do that's gonna make him go, oh, I'm about to murder this. You right, know, so it was I'm the same with Guru. Oh, yeah, 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 same thing. You know, the only difference that I'm used to with Guru is he'll give me the entire titles of all the songs on the album. Maybe one or two or three might not have a title, but the majority of it, he has all the titles, and he'll put in parentheses what it's about in, in one little short line. Like, it may say Mass Appeal, our first single, you know, Above the Clouds, a joint about your mental. The, you know, little things like that. It gets a little more personal. Like that, posse yeah. joint with Freddie Fox and Big Shug. Yeah. That's how I make the tracks match those titles. Yeah. And there you go. It's pretty amazing. Thanks, so. Right, that's I that's think. pretty amazing, actually. It is. And I, and I found all the papers that he wrote. Mm -hmm. um, just going through it when we cleaned out his house after he died, we found all of those. So we're going to eventually maybe publish in a book or something with all his handwriting. That would be I amazing. Entire, I think the hip hop. I found the entire Moment of Truth album, lyrics, and his map out all in the same box. I just, you know, so we're going to possibly do some type of book that will show all those lyrics. I think the hip hop community would be very, very, yeah, yeah, very thankful dumb. about Eminem that. Eminem did a book like that. I thought it was amazing. Or, the way I am, yeah, you mean? Yeah, Eminem did, yeah. When yeah. His first one they dropped with the CD in yeah, the yeah. book, that was the same thing. It was well done. I want to do something like that. Absolutely. Well done. With that being said, for hip hop, thank you so much for taking the time absolutely. to talk to me. Absolutely. Now you know what? You gotta get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> right. He's doing the he's doing the sign again. I gotta get out. <laughs> right. Hip hop the Helene. DJ Premier, Rose the Five Nine. Peace. Peace. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>